Good morning. Welcome to the uh, welcome to Monday, April 21st, uh, Board of County Commission meeting. Uh, please take a moment to silence your cell phones. Make sure that they're in the vibrate mode or whatever you choose to do. And if you would, please stand with me and we'll open our meeting. Father, we thank you for this day and your blessings to us. We pray that you'll keep your hand on us. I pray the things that we say and do here today will be pleasing in your sight. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. I uh, believe it's Commissioner Lynchard, or is it? Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our nation's flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, sir, so as uh, Mr. Salter, do you have any additions to the... To the uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to do an add-on under economic development, a brief update from Shannon Ogletree on Small Business Resource Guide, please. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, and Commissioner Cole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on Thursday, I'd like to do an add-on on Thursday, but I'd like the board to be aware of it before then. I sent an email to Mr. Walker that he dispersed out to the rest of the board. It's a dis, uh, for discussion only, information only. It's a waste to energy uh, group that would like to come and address the board. Okay. So, so you'll get with the administrator and get that put on the agenda? Yes, I will. But I, I just okay. wanted to bring it to everybody's attention today. So it won't be a okay. surprise on Thursday. So. All right. Appreciate that. Right. Commissioner Lynchard. Mr. Chairman, I have some information I want to share on the recent uh, flooding events. But we'll do that if we could just uh, when we talk about the uh, Holly by the Sea. Stormwater project. Okay, sir, and that's in the administrative. Yeah. Under engineering number five. Yeah, number five. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, county administrator. Mr. Chairman. Two items that uh, add on from the uh, uh, TDC meeting last week. I believe it's an allocation of $10,000 for the Navarre Fishing Rodeo uh, that, that they recommend allocating to the uh, Chamber, Navarre Chamber Foundation, and a $5,000 allocation to the City of Milton for a portable stage. And I get those went through the TDC uh, grant process, so they come as a recommendation from the so we make those one item since they're both from the TDC? Surely, just number 16. All right, we'll make that number 16. And also, I believe the email, that y'all saw the email from uh, Ms. Cox that she's asked that the board defer the um, uh, Think Pink um, uh, discussion on, on right. the Navarre Park until the uh, uh, May 5th committee meeting. Okay, which number is, where is that on the email? Number okay, 12. so we'll just pull it until we see it come back to us. That's correct. Chief. Just go ahead and pull item 12, gentlemen, if you will. County attorney. If we can add an attorney's form to the end of the meeting, I would appreciate it. Do you want to wait to the end of the meeting or do you want to put it at the end of admin? End of the meeting is fine. Okay, we'll put it before the public forum. If you'll make that item number seven, please, under, uh, well, just don't number it, just we'll put it before the public forum. Okay. Uh, nothing else from that side of the room? Everybody down there is happy. All right, uh, item number one, the administrative committee is discussion of a variance to the sidewalk requirements contained in Article 4 of the Land Development Code uh, in the Parkwood Commons Phase 1 as requested by Thomas Holmes Incorporated. Uh, Mr. Chairman, excuse me. Yes, sir. Economic development. I am so sorry. Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Salter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Shannon Ogletree. Good morning. Uh, 
A few months ago, we heard the call of uh, assisting more small businesses located in the county and as new businesses move into the county on how we can assist them more. So with the uh, unrolling of the SBDC having their office, having a sub office within our office uh, across the parking lot, we've also developed a small business uh, resource guide to help businesses uh, as they move into the county or as they uh, look to expand on how to, actually how to do that, who to contact, who to go to, what permits may be needed, what tax IDs, how to set up a corporation. So we've developed a, uh, a small business resource guide that we'll uh, hand out to each one of you and that we hope to put at the chambers and to have uh, at our office so that uh, as companies move in, they can look at this checklist and kind of just learn how the process. So uh, let me hand this out real quick. This is a, uh, like I said, a basic guide to help uh, the small business uh, within the county. And I hope to uh, make, a second, uh, make a second brochure in the coming months on how to, can companies be successful. So we get them open, uh, they open the doors, but then how do we move it forward? So develop a more comprehensive, uh, like I said, a success guide on what, what can a company do to be more successful in Santa Rosa County. So, uh, any questions on the brochure? Mr. Chairman, thank you, Shannon. This looks very, very good. I, I looked through it briefly. It looks like it's got some great information. I would hope that you're going to get on the agenda of the Chambers of Commerce and other small business development groups like Rotary Clubs and make sure that they know this is available. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that concludes our report. Thanks, sir. Now we'll do the administrative committee. Item number one is discussion of a variance to sidewalk requirements contained in Article 4 of the Land Development Code. That's the LDC. And the Parkwood Commons Phase 1 is requested by Thomas Holmes Corporation. Who wants to lead off? The attorney or? Uh... I can. I can. Uh, Mr. Thomas Henry appeared before you all at your last meeting to discuss sidewalks in the subdivision Parkwood Commons in which he owns a majority of the lots. Um, the sidewalks are required currently by our land development code, but because prior sidewalks, each sidewalk in the subdivi subdivision is being built when the house is built, so that eventually when the subdivision is built out, they'll all connect together. Um, prior homes have sidewalks in front of them, but the, we've recently learned that those sidewalks are not ADA compliant. So Mr. Henry is requesting that he not be required to build sidewalks in front of the houses he is constructing as in, and is going to construct because of the expense and uh, engineering required to hook up to the non-ADA compliant portions that are already there. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. <clears throat> this this issue is out in the Pace area. I've ridden through there two or three different times and. I have a question for the county engineer. Uh, the sidewalks that are currently in place, and there are like five of them, I think, they, they tie in with the sidewalk, I mean the driveway. And my question is gonna be, what's the difference between those sidewalks and an ADA compliant sidewalk? Is it that the ADA can't have a slant to it? No, the ADA may have a slant. The eight constructed sidewalks and park more commons do not have ADA compliant driveway. The ADA sidewalk must project across the lot through the driveway section carrying an ADA compliant section and then connect to the other side of the sidewalks. Instead, the builder just developed the, side, the driveways with straight grade and it exceeds the 2% cross slope. And that's what created all of these non-compliant driveway sidewalk combinations my, my other question is going to be if uh, the ADA compliant sidewalks are required mm -hmm. and they tie in with the existing sidewalks will that create more of an obstacle for ADA compliant than if we just allowed him to continue to build what's there now as it relates to you want to touch that on uh, as it relates to future sidewalks, there will have to be a transition because obviously you must 
bring those steep sidewalks down to transition to compliant sidewalks. So there's got to be a transition phase. And then as far from there forward, he would have to be ADA compliant. But the issue that created the discussion was uh, the request for the county to accept the improvements for maintenance. This is a dedicated, is, is publicly dedicated to the public on the plat, but the county has not accepted those improvements within the right of way for maintenance. And that will continue to, be, to plague our ability to accept them if we know they are non compliant. So I, I think possibly a greater question is where would be the most logical place to have that transition? Uh, here again, I'm not interested in the whole subdivision being built out non-compliant, but I just don't want to create an obstacle if we don't have a good transition point. Well, I, I, speaking for other departments, um, the building department issues the building permits and the CO, but part of that CO is an approval from the road and bridge department for the driveway and the sidewalk. They must pull a driveway permit. And these are future homes and existing homes that have yet to be CO'd. And currently, uh, road and bridge has not issued uh, their driveway approval for those, not, those new non-compliant yeah. sidewalks. And that will further impede the issuance of a CO. So the, the question you ask is all future sidewalks must be compliant to get a CO. I, uh, if you, Commissioner Salter, you... I just had a couple more questions. Go ahead. Yes, sir. The, the sidewalks that are already in place, are we going to require someone to go back and upgrade them? I'll answer that one. Yes, sir. Well, we, we would not be interested, I would not think, in accepting the roadways and drainage for maintenance without that being done. If you don't mind, I'd like to interject at this point. I don't understand why we're, I'm not an attorney. A couple of you guys are here. We're approaching this problem obliquely from the rear. We've got a builder that built driveways and sidewalks that aren't compliant. Rather than trying to work around that, we need those to become compliant. And that's the cleanest, simplest way to handle this. There's five houses that need to be rectifiers at four. It's, All right, it's so more there's like, eight. More like eight, yes, sir. So there's eight houses out there that are wrong. They're just wrong. And, and whoever built them is, I'm assuming, is a certified general contractor and well aware of the ADA requirements. You know, things happen. The simplest, cleanest way to handle this thing is to make them go back and fix it. And then for us to proceed from that point forward, instead of trying to patchwork this thing, I really don't understand why we're fumbling with this one. It, it seems pretty simple to me. Mr. Commissioner Cole. Thank you. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I was under the understanding that these previously built ones were prior to the ADA requirement. Am I wrong on that? The, the very early ones that were built. That's not, that's not accurate, sir. That's not, okay, then. It was prior to our requirement that they, that the Land Development Code requirement that they be included. Okay. I knew it was prior to something there. It predates the requirement for sidewalks to be included in that subdivision. The right. developer elected to put them, included them in the covenants and on the development order, which is the construction plan. And at that point, right. when he made that election, he was obligated to comply with the ADA. Correct. Sir. And so he's failed to do that, and let's just let him go back and correct that. And then we can move on instead of trying to patchwork this thing. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I want to see compliance too, but at some point in time, we approved those initial sidewalks. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So we have a responsibility here as well. We do. We need to have some training for the folks that missed that. But there's two problems here. There's a problem that, that the builder didn't catch the ADA compliance problem, and that's his problem. Our problem is that our inspectors overlooked it. So our fix is that we retrain our inspectors, make sure they understand the ADA requirements and how to be a little bit more diligent in the discharge of their duties. His requirement is to go back and straighten out what he built. My opinion, I mean, I, like I said, I'm not an attorney, but that's just common sense to me. 
Yes, sir, and, 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 we're, and, and that's where we are going, at least as far with the second part that you, you noted is, is uh, we've, we've, we've got the, there, there takes specific equipment to make sure that the slopes are, cor are correct. Uh, we will have to go back, and I think we're going to change, I have to change our procedures of how we do the inspections. I think it's going to be a two-part process. Not only will we inspect uh, the, the, the finished product, but I think to be effective, you're going to have to finish before, you're going to have to inspect at least when the sidewalk slash uh, driveway is uh, poured or, or prior to being poured when it's formed up and make sure that the, the levels are right. Am I right, Avis? I mean, we've, we're going to have to change our process and it's going to become a little more cumbersome. That's correct. And we've already changed our process. Back in 2010, when these driveways were uh, inspected and, and approved and they got the COs on the houses, you know, our driveway inspector at that time, who, who is actually not the driveway inspector we have now, but that's neither here nor there. It really wasn't his fault because what he was trained to do was go out and he looked primarily at two things, uh, the drainage and the structural integrity of the sidewalk and the driveway. He didn't even realize he was looking for ADA compliance in 2010. We know that now. We've bought the equipment. We've bought our inspector a digital level so he can check those sidewalks. So we've already done that training. And we're going to find these in the future, or you know, from this point on, we will find those and, and have those corrected and won't have this problem. But in 2010, the driveway inspector just simply didn't know. Now, the problem you're going to face with uh, trying to make these non-compliant sidewalks on these six homes compliant is that it's not just the work that's got to be accomplished is not just within the right-of-way. There's going to have to be a transition up into that private property uh, not up on their driveway. You're going to have to go probably 10 to 20 feet up into the, drive, the, the private driveway, as well as their, their lawns, their yards are going to be, have to probably have some grade work done. So you're talking about regrading lawns. You're talking about resodding, possibly uh, removing and replacing irrigation systems. So you're talking about a much bigger thing than just simply doing some work on the right of way, much bigger I, project. I understand that. And like the last boss I had before I retired from the Air Force was fond of saying, gentlemen, I understand that's a problem. It's just not my problem. And while I understand what you're saying is, is, is an extensive problem, that's not Santa Rosa County's problem. That's the builder's problem. But I don't know that you're going to get the, the original builder who built those homes to come back because their answer is going to be, I got a, I got a uh, approved driveway permit from the county. Well, that's what we have attorneys for. I don't mean to be dominating this discussion. It just seems to be common sense to me. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Chairman. Please. <laughs> There is a, uh, another alternative, may not be the best alternative, but it, it is an alternative, and that's that what, what staff has been talking about is to uh, give a variance to the, to the builder for the rest of the lots, to, uh, remove the requirement for sidewalks, and have him agree to remove the noncompliant sidewalks, which means he could accomplish all that work within the right-of-way without having to impact private property. Because the driveways will, and, the, and the yards, the lawns will be fine if you just simply remove the sidewalks. And these sidewalks are really, if he doesn't do sidewalks on the rest of the subdivision, it's not a great loss because the, you've got you know, short segments of sidewalks on two different sides of the street. So it's really a, a sidewalk to nowhere is, is what you've got. I mean, it's really not even adequate to take a walk because it's going to be a very, very short walk. And so uh, that is another alternative is just to simply do a variance to allow the builder to not put sidewalks at all in this subdivision. And then also have the builder, because we're giving that variance, have him agree to go and remove those non-compliant sidewalks, work with those property owners. But the work he'll be doing will be within the right-of-way, so it's mainly primarily a county approval that he's going to need to remove those sidewalks, but just as a courtesy to those property owners to tell them, let them know that it's something that must be done in order to, uh, for, the, uh, for the subdivision to come under pay road uh, and drainage maintenance by the county. Otherwise, there's going to be no the county can't accept the subdivision. There's going to be no one to maintain those roads. So you would hope those six property owners would understand that it's in their best interest to have those sidewalks removed in order for the subdivision roads to become under county maintenance. Commissioner Cole. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I know that may be the simplest route out, but we've got 
six or seven families in there now that purchased in there with the expectancy of having sidewalks. Uh, and, and we've seen uh, very evident how, how well received sidewalks are and how people are attracted to them and, and, and going back to using sidewalks. I just don't want boards of commissioner in the future be faced by a homeowners association or you know a group of people that eventually build in there and say, well, we'd like to have sidewalks now and now we've you know just put a problem off. So I, I'd like to explore some other possibilities of, of keeping the sidewalks uh, if, if at all possible. Anybody else have anything to add on this, Commissioner Lynch? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with Commissioner Cole that you, know, you had a number of families who've already purchased their home in there, invested in in their their home, and and they had um, the expectation of having sidewalks when they built in there, when they bought in there, and to for the county to come in and eliminate that requirement, you know, that would interfere with with their vested interest, you know, what, what they had planned on long term. So I'd like to see a solution that, that keeps the sidewalks. Well, I, I agree, and I don't know where we are legally. Uh, I just know common sense says it's just to uh, the, the builder, in good faith, go back and straighten out his mistake. That's true. Commissioner Cole. Mr. Chairman, I, you know, I agree, if I, and I don't know, if you're right, you know, we got an attorney that can hash that out, but I really don't see as where we have the leverage to change that my question I, I change guess, what that well have them come back and, and retrofit that but as you said that's you know that's an attorney problem yeah. right there so we can we can task her to, to look into that if we require or desire to do so my question I'd like to pose the county attorney or county uh, engineer uh, two things one if if we you know, to, to get this compliant where we can accept the total subdivision for county maintenance, we'd have to have them all done. Is there a possibility of electing to, to isolate those, those? Well, I guess that'd be hard to do. How much work would it take to, to build a transition on the sidewalk itself and the driveway to where the balance of them are built ADA compliant and, and we fall back as time allows and, and and correct the other ones I mean that's that seems to be the big thing getting this gentleman to move forward where he's got two houses to sell and and wants to build more I'd like to see us somehow figure out how, how we move forward with the balance of the subdivision and construction and ADA compliancy but build some sort of transition area on what's existing until an answer could be found to how we how we make everything right uh, engineer or Avis, either one, yeah. whoever. I mean, is it is that an impossibility to have it a safe transition from ADA to what's there until we can hash out how to make it all right? Well, I, I believe, and Ms. Jones may be the best one to answer this question because in my discussions with her, she wasn't in favor of any kind of transition. I, yeah, I can't answer that from an engineering perspective in any way, shape, fashion, or form. But if the answer is to continue to require the sidewalks um, so that Mr. Henry would build per lot as we've talked about, then I think the better thing to do would not be to have a compliant sidewalk that butts up into, for lack of a better term, a non-compliant one creating ledges and steeps and that kind of thing, but to simply have him stop his construction at some point, his sidewalk construction, leaving a gap until these others might be fixed or, or come into compliance some way how long it takes to transition in engineering i can't answer that well, i have a and there there lies my question i mean we're looking at like this is this cliff you're going to fall off and and i would i would hope that davis or, or roger could say okay it's going to be a a little offset grade or, or something that a wheelchair could roll across and just maybe put a little yeah. caution you're, sign you're missing maybe. the bigger problem there though the bigger What's problem that? is the ada you're going to get in a lot, uh, not you, it's an editorial yeah. you, this county is going to get in a lot of trouble with the ADA. We're, uh, are we required? I mean, now that we, now that we have knowledge of this ADA non-compliant situation, whose obligation is it to correct it? It's 
not ours because we have not accepted these for maintenance at this point. And again, I would advise not doing so. Okay, so given the fact that we're, we're in a position where we're not going to accept this until this is corrected, I don't see what we lose by asking the owner to go back in there and fix it. All he can do is tell us no, and then we'll have to try to find another answer. But uh, that seems to be the, the, the cleanest, simplest way right now is let's approach the builder and ask him to fix it. And if he fixes it, fine, the problem's gone. And if he tells us no, then we know that we're gonna have to do something along uh, some other lines. Anybody else wanna say something before we bring up the public? Sir, do you have something you wanna to add to this discussion? Yes, sir. Name and address, please. Thomas Henry, uh, 3158 Gateway Lane. Uh, I have a lot of information on this issue. Uh, know it better than anybody in here. Um, there's a lot of misinformation going around, maybe some misperceptions about what the issue is. Uh, quite frankly, my issue was as simple as asking for a variance. I mean, a variance is the easy is the easiest way to handle and take care of this issue um, for the long run. But uh, I just want to make it clear, I, I'm, I happened to purchase the lots that were in there. I did not develop the subdivision. So we'll make that clear. I did not develop the subdivision and I did not, there's 10 houses by the way, there's 10 houses built. Okay, so it's, it's a 10 house issue. Um, and I did not build the first six houses. Did not build them. Okay, and those houses were built, I think, around in 010 sometime. Um, that's been a number of years now. Uh, there, there is nobody to come back and fix. I mean, you know, I've got my four houses that I've built that contribute to the six to make the 10. Uh, my four houses were built in and amongst and around the six existing houses. So I had to work with whatever was there, um, which was the driveways and sidewalks that were built before. Um, I, you know, I, I just wanna make sure that you guys understand I did not create this problem. I did not go out there to try to build something non-compliant. And quite honestly, th this issue is, is, I guarantee you, a, a, not an issue out there that, that is broad-based in the builder community. I mean, if nobody's had an issue with this, and I tell you, if you drive around, you'll find out that it's, it's, it's not an issue that people understand. Um, and it did not, there was no, the only reason this came up is because there was an inlet that transitioned into the sidewalk that created a situation that just made something look different. Otherwise, just, you know, nothing happens from my floor. It's just kind of an, you know, one of those things that happen. Uh, so I'm just kind of a victim in this. I'm stuck in the middle trying to figure out what my solution is. I know all the answers. And I know all the solutions, and I know where they lead to. And the easiest one that I came up with that I thought was the best solution for everybody involved was just a variance. So it wouldn't affect the whole ball of wax. You can't, and if you can go back to the other builder and get them to fix the sidewalks or, you know, maybe you can do that. I don't know if you can do that or not because they were approved. The other, the other thing is the six people that live in there, I think they need to understand what's going to happen to their driveways if this has to happen. If you go in there and make this all have to be compliant, remember, I, did not, I didn't build a subdivision, so I'm not, you know, I, I just wanna make sure everybody understands that. You know, as far as accepting the subdivision and all that, I didn't have nothing to do with any of that. I just bought the lots in the existing part of it. I'm trying to get my houses built and get them done, and, and I, I, I'm in a rock and a hard place because I can't go forward and I can't go back, and I'm sitting here waiting. But the six people in the subdivision need to understand what's gonna happen to them if you guys require those sidewalks to be put in the way they are, not only are the sidewalks gonna to have to come out and change, but no, the only way to make that compliant the way this has been explained to me is their driveway is gonna to have to be torn out all the way, you know, for a pretty good ways up in order to make that transition for that sidewalk across their driveways. It's gonna change their driveways, it's gonna change how they live and how they pull up into their house every single day. I don't know if they can understand that. I mean, and I haven't talked to them about it, um, you know, I've talked a little bit to Mr. Dixon about it, but the way that's going to have to be designed is going to be different than what it is now, and it's going to be quite different. And so that's going to have a bigger profound effect on them than the sidewalk. Now, whether you know, what they choose to do, it, it, you know, that's neither here nor there for me. I'm just wanting a solution. 
And I'm trying to give you the easiest solution, an easier solution for them. And if those sidewalks have to go across their driveway, it's going to change. It's going to severely change some of those folks. And I guarantee you they're not going to like it. They're going to like it worse than what it is now. Um, now, my issue, you know, whatever, you know, I just want to be able to get a solution on mine. And I, I didn't create it. I can, you know, if they say put the sidewalks in, that's fine. It creates a bigger issue by doing that than creating a variance. That's all I'm trying to do. And, and the variance was the easiest, simplest way to do it. And, 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 and there's, no, there's really no reason not to do it, and it's not going to hurt anything. And, I don't, and, and from my, and I think it was stated up here, and I apologize, apologize for getting here late because I didn't know this was the first thing on the agenda. But uh, I'm under the impression that sidewalks weren't required at the time this, this plat was, was approved, so it wasn't something that had to be there. Um, there's, and I just want to try to make sure I get the numbers correct. There's 10 houses built in there right now. Um, I had 47 lots. So if you had 47 to the six that were existing, that means there's 53 lots that we're talking about in the subdivision. There's 10 houses built out of the 53 lots that are there. So that's the numbers that we're talking about. Um, the variance was the easiest solution. Um, I think you all just need to make sure that you look at all the issues and make sure you get everything correct on the issues because outside of that, it's a lot bigger issue than what you may think it is. Just saying, hey, we're going to come back in here and correct it, there's a whole lot more fish to fry in this thing than just that simple statement. Mr. Sure. Chairman, and, and I yes, just sir. want to enforce what Mr. Henry's saying, that if you make the area of the right-of-way flatter, so that you can make the, in front of these six homes that are already there, if you make the area of the right of way flatter so that you can make these sidewalks ADA compliant, then you're going to make those driveways much steeper. That, that's, that's a big part of the issue is those, and those homeowners, you may not be happy with a, a much steeper driveway, a much steeper yard, uh, and the changes that are going to have to be made. And so you're dealing with six different property owners and having, on, working on their private property to make all this work. And again, that's the reason staff felt like a variance would, would be the, the be better we'll just, alternative. And, and it may be the simplest yes, answer to a really thorny question is to, uh, since sidewalks were not required, are they required now? I still need an answer about, what, about our liability and the, the ADA requirement now that we're aware of it. Is, if, if any of that falls on our plate, no, we, sir. You know, I want you to be positive that that's the right answer. Yes, sir. So that we have no liability in it. If, uh, if someone, if the issue comes up, we're not going to go to court on it, even though we're the obvious deep pockets. It's going to be the builder that, that created the problem. Uh, unless, of course, you were to accept it for maintenance, which okay. I, again, which, am not advising. Right, which, you know, makes no sense at all. So, so to, give a, to give a variance would release Mr. Henry's assets Yes, sir. Now, because he's I'm the innocent here. party here, he's the guy that you know brought the problem to us, pointed it out to us. He's got money invested. He's got interest ticking. I mean, he needs to sell these houses. I, I will call to your attention that I we received an email from someone opposed to the variance, and there may be homeowners here opposed as well. I'm not certain about that, so I just thought I'd mention that to you. I'm sure, and we're not going we're not going to go final on this decision today. This is Monday. Mr. Chairman. Uh, so I haven't had a chance. Is it what you just handed us? Is that email? I haven't had a chance to read it. Yes, sir, Commissioner Cole. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Henry makes a couple of good points, but he asked us also to look at the whole big picture. We've already had an email from one other builder requesting, it. I think, a similar variance. What I think we're going to do is start a snowball effect on people deciding not to build sidewalks or, or putting in requests not to build sidewalks. And also, I, I realize he didn't create this problem, but he did buy the lots with the knowledge of knowing sidewalks were in in the plot. So, you know, I, although I feel for him, we, you know, I don't think that I don't think going backwards is, is the way to do this. I, you know, just part, you know, put it in for discussion. Loretta Aiken, 1828 Sundown, Navarre. I've been following this a little bit, and uh, I don't have sidewalks in Holly by the Sea. Is this a new thing with ADA? That was my big question. I'll let them correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the county didn't require sidewalks at the time that this plat was approved. Sidewalks are required by the covenants of this particular 
subdivision, though. And so. and just to further complicate the matter, our LDC did change, and if you can project my computer real quickly, it does require sidewalks for future development. As you look at the projection, this is phase one. It falls within. Thank you. This is phase one of Parkwood Commons, and it falls within a quarter of a mile of a school. And in, in that, our current LDC that was changed after this plat, uh, I mean, the development order was issued, does require it. So that's what we're actually varying. Well, the question, on the, LDC. the question on the floor, though, was when did ADA come into effect? ADA uh, has being always been in effect uh, for 92 or something like that. So any sidewalk constructed since 1992 is required to be ADA compliant. Well, I've been in my house since 1992, and I don't have a sidewalk. Well, That's not the issue. A, oh, I'm just saying, so That's if they the were issue. saying since 92, but... The, the ADA came into effect in about 1992, okay. and if a sidewalk is constructed, it must be constructed in compliance oh, with sorry. the ADA. But that's not to say that sidewalks were required in a subdivision, and they weren't in Santa Rosa County until I think late 2010. Um, if they're within a certain distance of a school, then they have to be constructed. I'm not in favor of giving away things, but it's not their fault. And I would like to see the camp. I know that y'all built a whole lot of sidewalks down now, uh, 399. I don't know what they cost, but I think to help these help this situation from now on, they should have to put in sidewalks. And it's possible you could work out something to help these people because as a realtor, a previous realtor for 20 years, I know that sidewalks will help sell the property. If you've got a school in the near area, you need the sidewalks. But what's the solution for the people that have already built in there? You know, they're suffering. So there's got to be some way we can work with them and, and make it happen. But the kids do need sidewalks if they're going to walk to school. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I guess we need to move this forward to Thursday. You have something to add? Max, push a button, make your light come on. That there one? you go. Okay. Uh, I live in Parkside Drive, and I was there before Mr. Henry bought the lots. And uh, I have no problem with the variance of doing away with the sidewalk, except Mr. Melvin, uh, I think it's to the point where Mr. Henry has been held in hostage like uh, for something that he was not responsible for. And we, the homeowners, are being held in hostage for something that we were not responsible for because the county had a responsibility to see that the sidewalks and the driveways were put into ADA compliance, which they did not. Yes, sir. That's, that was a point I made earlier. You may not have caught it, but... There's two problems here. We missed it, and that's but, that's but, a that's a problem. But but he is ultimately responsible because he built it. We, I, and we, and we, I agree with what you said, except then you turned around and said the other builder ought to be responsible, and and I can see where you're saying that. But I also think that the county has a responsibility because the inspector did not catch, and and make the builder comply to the ADA rules. And the, the problem that I have with, if you do away with the variance, is that we have, I'm the second lot as you come in the subdivision. Mr. Henry has not built on the first lot. But if you give him a variance, there will be no sidewalk on that first lot. Then my house has a sidewalk. The next house was a house that Mr. Henry built on. There is no sidewalk. The next two houses have sidewalks, and then the next house does not have a sidewalk because Mr. Henry has built in the in-between 
the, the vacant lot. So you're gonna pull into a subdivision that has no sidewalk, has sidewalk, has no sidewalk. And I, I just think it's gonna look, I mean, it's not, it's gonna look bad to start off with. And when you're walking down the sidewalk, you walk up to somebody else's, when you start walking on grass, you're walking on somebody else's yard where it may be county property, but it's still somebody else's yard that they maintain. Uh, you talk about changing the sidewalks to ADA, um, the, side, the driveways is gonna be the problem because you're gonna have to go up probably 10 or 15 or maybe 20 feet to change the grade of the sidewalk or you're gonna have a sidewalk that comes down, a sharp bend for the flat sidewalk and then another sharp bend to the curb. So it's not gonna be just you know, one transition, it's gonna, it's gonna be more than, than that. And I'm not sure that how that's gonna look. Uh, I have no problem with the variance, with the, the sidewalks on the rest of the subdivision, as long as you address the, the people that bought houses out there with the impression, because we did get a certificate of occupancy, which means the county has accepted that responsibility, and 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 yet we don't. You're you're holding Mr. Henry up, not giving him a certificate of occupancy because of the sidewalks. So it, it looks like you know everybody. The D.R. Horton was wrong because they didn't put them in according to the ADA. The county was wrong because they did not count it to catch it. And now Mr. Henry's wrong because he's trying to correct it. <laughs> Mr. Henry, no way said Mr. Henry's wrong. Mr. Henry. No, no, Mr. Henry's not wrong. He's trying to get it straight, but he's held up too. He can't, he can't get his certificate of occupancy. I understand, and that's why we're laboring with this issue. We're trying to get this thing worked out, yeah. and this is Monday, so nothing's going to happen I know, today. I know, and I would be here Thursday, but yes, I've got to have surgery, and I wanted to be sure. And well, I appreciate your comments. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Can I, let me ask you one question. You, you said you support the variance. Do, I, I don't have any problem with them doing away with the sidewalks in the rest of the subdivision as long as they address the sidewalks in between the, the houses that are already built there and the ones that Mr. Henry is building now that has no sidewalks. And by address, you mean remove the sidewalks I that think, are there? No, he's already got, he's got two houses that he's put sidewalks in and he's got two that he hadn't put sidewalks in. Okay. So you, you live out there, so I'm trying to, trying to get your, your, your take on it. I mean, what would, at the end of the day, if we grant the variance, there aren't going to be any more sidewalks built in there. No more built. No more built. Because the variance is not to vary from the ADA requirement. We can't I do that. I understand so The variance that. would be to, to not build any more sidewalks. I object if you're not going to require sidewalks in the, the, to complete the so, sidewalks that are already vacancies in there. See, I have a house, and on both sides will be no sidewalks. I understand. And then the next two houses will have sidewalks. So you're going to be walking on sidewalk, on somebody's grass, on sidewalk, and on somebody else's grass. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to create a worse situation than if you do away with it. But when you do away, if you decide to take up all the sidewalks, you've got sprinkler systems to address out there, too. Because mm -hmm. I have a sprinkler system. It's already been torn up by the AT&T ones. Right, right. Well, I was just trying to get clear on, on you know, what your feelings no, were. No, I there. just want, I, I, what, what my idea, and I was in the building business, so, I, you know, I'm not new to the game here. But if you, my idea was is to complete the sidewalks in the existing area. And then at the last lot, where you would lift the variance, just make a transition from the sidewalk to the street, just sort of a bend, so you know you're at the end of the sidewalk and you're not gonna be going straight. But up to that point, sidewalks from the entrance to the first 10 houses is what it boils down to. Okay, all right, thank you. Is there anyone else here from this area? Yeah. No, okay. Thank you. 
what I was going to, what I would propose, I mean, and I, I was, I'm trying to help this situation out. <laughs> Obviously, I have an interest, but also would like to see a good solution for everybody involved. Um, I, w I wouldn't propose leaving what was there. I think you got to do something with the variance. We would go out there, and I would do this for the county or whoever. We would remove the existing sidewalks that are on those six houses and take them out and resod that area. Um, because, yeah, it wouldn't need to be, you know, part of one, part of the other. I would do that if that's what, you know, those folks wanted to do. We, we would do that, and that, that would take care of the sidewalks in that area, so it, it, it would all equal. We'd also have to bust ours out and take them out and do the same thing. Um, and the ones that, we, that don't have sidewalks in the houses that we have, uh, the reason they don't have sidewalks is because I, I, in my house, were sitting there. I, they, they were just sitting there, just, you know, sitting, mm -hmm. sitting, sitting. So we went ahead and, and uh, finished the yards and put them in, just didn't put sidewalks in because uh, I didn't want to put sidewalks in and have to come tear them out. So, you know, we just didn't put them in. So that's why the ones that are, that, that are finished don't have them. But um, we, we, you know, with the variance, we could remove those and, and take that issue out of it if, if that's what everybody was okay with. Now, if, if they weren't taken out, the other side of that, it, it, you know, if they stay in, then everybody's exist everybody every driveway in there would have to be busted out every single all, all the 10 houses every driveway would have to be busted out um, mo most of them would have to be busted out you know they say 15 20 foot it would probably be a little further than that in order to get it right it may have to be all the way up to the house to, to, to change that and fix it along with this all the sidewalks all the sidewalks have to come out anyway regardless mr have chairman you, just a minute just a minute mr one, one still has have, have you sat down and spoken with those six property owners? I, I have not. No, okay. Sir. I would recommend you do that because even if we grant you a variance, and I'm not going to give you any legal advice, but they have covenants that they could enforce against you because what? the covenants require sidewalks. A variance that we grant doesn't modify your covenants. So I would suggest you sit down and get them on board with your plan because well, then we'll have something we can address. I understand, and the covenants are there, and, and I, you know, I, I am the controlling interest in that by having that a lot, too. and I can change those covenants, so that is something that can be changed. Um, but in all, I mean, and I'm, look, I'm being honest as I can here. I'm trying to make sure everybody understands issues. Removing the sidewalks is a grain in the sand compared to the mountain of dirt that's going to have to be moved in order to change those folks' driveways to what we're having to do. I mean, I'm just trying to make it clear there. I don't think everybody understands that. I mean, you know, if, if we if, if we're going to keep those in there, the the modifications that are going to have to be made on their driveways is, is none of them are going to like it. I'm just telling you, none of them are going to like that, you know. And and and, and I, you know, I just want to make sure everybody understands that. So, and, and on top of that, the, the getting the road approved is going to be a you know a hard issue to do, which they also bought in there with approved road. I mean, I'm sure every one of them thinks the county's you know you know maintaining that road, which you know is going to find out that's not the case. Um, there's a whole, like I said, there's a whole lot of issues here that that can be easily solved with a variance. And, and every subdivision is different. I mean, you, you can't say it's going to be a groundswell of things that's going to happen. Everything's different. Every, sub, every, every, every issue is different. This one, you know, is very legitimate. Um, you know, you guys can make an, you can make a, you know, uh, a decision and it doesn't have to affect what could happen, to, you know, on another subdivision somewhere else because everything is different. Everything has a, a different set of standards. And, and, and just to make clear, uh, Mr. Dixon is right. The county did accept those and approve them. I mean, so it's kind of a, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, what was I, when I went in there and houses that are built for three or four years, um, you know, there was no, nothing to make me think there's anything wrong with them. I mean, the county accepted them, approved them. Um, so, there, you know, it, it's, it is something that, that um, has been done. And uh, I don't know how you go back from it when the county accepted them. Uh, it, it's, it's a tough one, but the variance would could do that, and, and that is something I think everybody would have to. You know, I'd be glad to talk to them about it, and I'd be glad to help where I can. But it, it you know, it's not just as easy as keeping them in there, um, and and not affecting, you know, their driveways worse. Let Mr. me ask Chairman. you this, if you would, please, uh, and then we'll we'll be through with this issue. Would you please canvas the the other owners and see if they are uh, accept if that if your suggestion is good with them then bring bring that back to us Thursday. does that clear this issue up uh ms jones <laughs> if 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 they he can control the covenants so that makes the covenant issue go away if the other owners are agreeable for him to take the sidewalks up and resod it if that satisfies them then we can get rid of this thing thursday is that correct yes, sir. <clears throat> 
that seems to be the best course of action to me. I appreciate hearing from the other board members. I mean, we can go on and handle something else. We've got a lot of work to do. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Is, uh, is it, this it, gonna be a majority rules in that subdivision? Because no. I can tell you right now, I, I think it's probably gonna be three to three. Three wants to keep the sidewalks and three, it doesn't make any difference on the thing. So We'll just have to see what Thursday <laughs> brings us. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Sir. Mr. Chairman, could I offer just one more? comment on that yes, sir. Uh, even though those six homes that have the non-compliant sidewalks got their COs they also got at their closing they, they got a letter from the county that's or a maintenance disclosure that stated that those roads are not maintained by Santa Rosa County so that should help Mr. Henry as he goes to talk to them you know if they if they Mr. Henry made the statement that they might they probably already think the roads are county maintained well they should know that they are not because they received a maintenance disclosure at their closing that states that those roads are not county maintained and I mean and that's his uh, that's his leverage to, to to get them to go along with removing the sidewalks to the fact that to get it under county maintenance uh, the sidewalks would have to be removed Commissioner Cole Mr. Uh Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, question was brought up: Would it have to be majority rule or not? I, if I bought, if I owned a house in there and did not want my sidewalk removed, I'd pretty, I'd be pretty upset with the board of commissioners to give permission to tear them out. So I, I would urge you to work diligently at getting 100% unanimous on this. Uh, that's, that's about the best I can tell you. But uh, I think okay. it'd be hard, hard for me to vote to allow you to take out someone's sidewalk from their house. And, and I might say if you were to grant a variance, that would not in any way require or give Mr. Henry permission to remove someone's sidewalk. He could work with them on removing them, but that is not anything that this variance would mandate or give him permission to do. I will also mention that the letter that was sent out about this says that on Thursday this item will be heard at 930. So I'll mention normal that. Public normal public hearing time. So I'll just mention that for folks who might All be right. interested. Ms. Henry, you have any parting comments, sir? I just want to make clear that the sidewalks are on county property. So, I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to remove them anyway without, you know, somebody give me approval. Yes, yeah, sir, <laughs> so we understand that. Right. Yeah, we understand that. All right. Uh, I'm going to uh, recommend we move item number one to Thursday without objection, and we should hear back from Mr. Henry and others. Uh, hearing none, it passes. Item number two is presentation update on the NARDA artificial reef project, which has been assigned uh, to the Florida Fish and Wildlife uh, Commission. Uh, Mr. Chairman, is, is Mr. Boston is here to brief that meeting. We also had Mr. Sandler was at the meeting, and then uh, Ms. Harris and, and uh, Ms. Berlinde, the county staff, were at the meeting. And this is kind of the is the is the NARDA. Uh, is, is projects are working through the process. I think they've, they've spun off the essentially the um, uh, reef portions of that to the FWC that has a long-standing uh, experience with, with those pro projects. And so, uh, Mr. Boston, will brief that to the board. Mr. Boston, please. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much, Hunter, for the, the uh, recap. Uh, what I have done is provide you a briefing uh, and I will go over it this morning. There's a short-term piece of this, which is an update to the status, as well as kind of a long-term piece we're going to get into in the next few slides. What we have currently is the NERDA Phase Three reef expansion, uh, which is off the coast of uh, Navarre, Florida. The council, uh, the uh, commissioners have granted uh, initial 30 reef element, which has been in place for about 18 months, Mike. And what we did is Mr. Griffith met with Mr. Melvin and Hunter back in the fall of 2012 and addressed two different reefing projects to be submitted by the county into this process. So about two years ago, uh, we went into this with the council's, bless council's blessing. So this is now almost at the final piece of these two projects. What we have is a full and final permit granted on the 4th of April to in expand the Gulf Reef element from 30 current reefs to 90 reefs. This will be the largest contiguous snorkel reef in the Gulf of Mexico. 
The funding for this is expected to be in the neighborhood of $180,000. We'll cover funding in a different slide. Slide. The other project is a large area, and one by two square miles, one contiguous mile off the coast of Navarre, Florida, and the reef, the uh, Gulf Snorkel Reef is approximately where that pointer is. This area also has about 400 and uh, was currently projected to have about 700 plus reef modules in it. And there are the 10 foot on the bottom, eight foot on top, all of the current uh, requirements to do that. We are in the process of discussing with the regional project, which these two projects are a portion of, with the other five coastal counties that were impacted by the BP oil spill. This regional project, uh, we have addressed different materials to try to be included in this. As your project manager for these two elements, we are currently assessing the, the cost benefit of uh, how to do this with other materials. But what I will say is the overall project includes not only the permitting area, but also all of the reefing materials that would go into it. We're discussing those options. We have gotten the, the longest period of time it takes to get a permit done is a NOAA PRD, Protected Resource Division. We talked with the folks on Friday after the meeting on the 16th, as Hunter mentioned last week. On Friday, we had an identification that there were no issues from NOAA PR, NOAA PRD and we should receive the full and final permit within the next 45 days. So that is R2 permits for R2 current NERDA reefs coming to the county and your citizens. And that's a big deal. Uh, this is just a, uh, this is a kind of an eye chart. It's a quick synopsis. I want to try to draw your attention to a couple key points to it. The draft amount for these two reefing projects is $1,200,000 and change. The issue is, I say it's draft. The reason is, on in May of 2013, the trustees announced, or I should say Governor Scott announced, the $11.4 million associated with the five county reefing projects. Now the way they came up with that number is, folks like Santa Rosa County did their due diligence created their reefing projects and submitted them in through the process. At the meeting on Wednesday, the Florida Wildlife Commission that they stopped accepting reefing projects in December of 2013. That is the first time that either I or Mike or Chris or anyone that we understand knew that that was the deadline. We have asked and I have written validation, we have asked recurringly for when the project cutoff date was. We were told it was in the summer, in the May, June, July timeframe of 13, which is why Santa Rosa County did not submit any further projects into the NERDA process. We're discussing a lot of things, and we'll again get into that a little bit in the long-term piece. Bay County and Walton County two members of the five county regional area sub continued to submit project areas to the point where Bay County has six reef projects that they haven't even submitted for a permit yet. And that total footprint, in other words, if we have an area of one square mile, the total reefing material footprint is the only criteria Florida DEP trustee and Florida Wildlife Commission used to adjudicate the $11.4 million to the five counties. Our footprint, because we didn't submit any further projects past the May timeframe and the, and the identification of $11.4 million, our take, our percentage of the total is the lowest of the five counties. I addressed this to the Florida Wildlife Commission appoint a representative as well as a Florida, as well as a trustee, and took some notes and said that they would address it. I think a letter from the county, and I don't know whether it would be from Hunter or from the commissioners, 
to the trustee and Affordable Wildlife Commission addressing uh, the consideration to weight more factors than just the sum total of footprint area that the other counties submitted up to December may be in conjunct may be a good way to redress the distribution of funds. We're not talking about trying to re redress reissue the total amount of funds. What we are looking at is the six Bay County submissions that did that aren't even in the permitting process yet. So I would ask that the, uh, the that that be taken into consideration as one point. Um, the, in the at the end of the day, and I'm not going to shoot my laser. I might hit Don in the eye there, but uh, the hundred it's about probably a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand dollar redistribution that we're talking to. And Santa Rosa wouldn't get all of it. The reason I asked the question in front of the trustees with the other counties president is because it would it could it would equally go from Bay County to the other four counties of which we may increase our amount by about $150,000. So I think that that uh, would be a worthwhile endeavor to undertake. Any questions to this point? This is just where we're at currently with the two projects. Just a statement, if you would. If you would do a straw man for us uh, for the letter you're requesting, if you just put together a quick straw man of the points that you think would be pertinent to include in the letter. Um, it would be two pieces. Well, um, yes, sir, but what I'm saying is would you hit us with that with an email or something so the staff can get oh, that knocked out? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, absolutely. We'll do sir. that. We yeah. can handle that. And I'll, I'll send it to both Lane as the uh, NERDA restore item as well as Hunter. Very well. Mr. Chairman. Mike? Yes, Bob. Uh, does, do you meet with the other county's representatives that sit in your same position uh, to discuss this? And if so, why, you know, where has their reaction been on this? Uh, or, uh, or do you meet, only meet individually? You don't, do you, do you have interconnectivity with the other members from the other counties? So, um, what, and, and, you know, a time frame? So, when we, when we met, um, well, yeah, Wednesday, so it was that specific meeting. This meeting was called uh, to bring in all of, the five counties reef coordinators um, and currently Santa Rosa County does not have a reef coordinator or marine resource division. We have various elements like the Marine Advisory Council, the Sea Grant liaison, other folks, but there's not a central focus for that. So I tried to coordinate a number of folks and of course Ms. Harris uh, as your grant writer it seemed like that would be a good avenue as well and I discussed it with uh, Lane as a restore representative and both your administrator hunter before we did that so in the meeting uh, with the five county administrator the five county administrators there was all of the permitting process the only person the only group that was not represented was the u.s coast guard so i don't know if i've addressed the question exactly bob i think i can address that is that i think specifically that's been one of the problems and i think that's why fwc got involved of course they're, they're going to manage the project but they, they have been dealing with each of the counties separately uh, and 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 really the the information that that, that Bob and, and we hadn't traveled under last year uh, uh, was that they were expecting shovel ready projects that was the whole and, yes. and shovel ready in, in this in this world means uh, permit either either pending or or some kind of uh, time frame for expectation and so that that's where that's been. I think that, that we will have more coordination. I know it's Cambia County, I think, was surprised that you, that they, I don't think they, nobody except Walton and Bay um, uh, pressed any more. And I know that Escambia's got some permitted sites because we've participated with them in the past. So all that to say, uh, I, I believe this was the first meeting that they've really had the five counties in the room. It, it, was, it was actually the second and uh, it was there, I was actually on uh, my military time in Stuttgart, and I dialed into that meeting, and it was the 4th of February. But even in that meeting, it was not discussed as to the, what the criteria would be to distribute funding. Okay. Again, the, all the if you will, counties have not had transparency or clear guidance as to the distribution of the Governor Scott, you know, of the trustees 
$11.4 million. Um, if we could do a supposition, you could look at it and say, well, obviously the other counties may have known about the criteria, that's why they just submitted a bunch. We don't know any of that. What we do know is uh, Santa Rosa County's reef projects were put in. They were part of the criteria. The trustees and VP negotiated back in the spring of 2013 to leverage the $11.4 million for the regional uh, project of, reef, of artificial reefs. Bay counties weren't. Most of Walton counties were not. And I, at that time. So, so what I'm hearing is two different, two different things that to me don't sound right. One, according, you know, and, and Hunter clarified it, you know, we, we're, under the, we're the, under the assumption, I guess, that shovel ready or having permit in hand would be in this necessary to submit. And that also, if I heard you right, they were allowed to submit beyond a date that we thought was a deadline. Not only we, Escambia County, Okaloosa County, and Santa Rosa County all had that perception. I've talked many times with Mr. Turpin, who was a marine source uh, manager for Escambia County, Santa Rosa County resident. He has a vested interest in seeing us succeed as well. Sure. Um, he, he takes a significant umbrage with the way, with the one single criteria for distribution of funds, which is only the amount of reef floor bottom coverage up until December. He thinks that is incorrect, but understanding his issue is he has, he put so many in up front because he has a staff in an office that he is getting 27% of the funding. So he doesn't necessarily want to change the, you know, change the dynamic. Yeah. So we understand, and, and Bob and I have talked, and he's also talking with Mr. Keith Johnson of Wetland Sciences, who is our agent for a reef process permit. Keith Johnson, Wetland Sciences, is also the reef uh, manager, permitting manager for Escambia County. Go ahead. Sorry, sir. I was just going to say, if you go ahead with your briefing, uh, you've answered our question. We understand the scope of the problem. And Okay. Yeah. You bet. All right. No other questions? Okay. So that, why is this important to the county? Why are we uh, taking the time to do this? If we look at the integration of the reef environment within uh, Navarre and Santa Rosa County, uh, you have, as, a, as the commissioner supported, and the school board has supported the Navarre Marine Science Station, Navarre Marine Sanctuary, the Turtle Rescue, the TDC efforts to bring this together. So what I try to do is provide a graphic that shows how we're trying to integrate this into Santa Rosa County's, if you will, strategic communication. And the strategic communication here is how we collectively and specifically you as a leadership of the county are viewing a area, geographic area that is between Eglin, National, Eglin Air Force Base, which there's no development, other tourist environments or anything else for 14 miles, and a national park, which you're sandwiched between on the west side, which goes for 13 miles. And how do we want to try to present this not only to our citizens, but how do we try to do a strategic uh, communication or agenda to enable this? And so the next slide is why we want to try to do that. This graph shows from 2009-2012, this is a population penetration. This is not of people that do it, how many more are doing it. In other words, if there are 100,000 people in Santa Rosa County, Four of them had a kayak, if you will, and did things in 2009, and eight, I'm sorry, 4,000 of them did, and 8,000 are doing it in 2012, which was two years ago. This trend is a national trend. So if you think of the folks that we can target to come into kind of an eco-tourism, those things, and it, Robert, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Blaylock, if you could go back one slide. What I would bring up to you is, this is the largest contiguous reef site near shore and furthest from the past in the Gulf of Mexico. We have the longest pier in the Gulf of Mexico. We have the largest contiguous snorkel reef in the Gulf of Mexico. We have Science Center that is associated with our school system. Um, talking with Charlene Morrow, the director, 
about trying to expand it into the higher education elements and that have the uh, marine biology, biology degrees and trying to team with those folks. Uh, we're very excited about some of the prospects. As you know, you just granted the camera element to look at the reefs, which is another targeting opportunity. So if we're looking at this holistically, slide, Roger, thank you. If we're looking at this holistically, slide, those are the national trends. If we look at a local trend, this is just one club in the local area, and we see the trend line from 2006 to 13 meet exactly the national trend line. There are multiple clubs here. So these are folks that are taking advantage of, quote unquote, the idea of ecotourism, low impact, those type of things, and the reefs aren't even there. If we expand this opportunity, both in the offshore, the brackish intercoastal areas, as well as our rivers and marine, and try to, and try to wrap that together with our sister county, because we don't own all of the bays, but between Escambia County and Santa Rosa County, then I think we have a good strategic partnership to try to take advantage of this, and specifically our geographic area, we can draw in those folks, and it is a growing population uh, to be to take advantage of what we're providing from the county. How do we do that? Slide, please. Uh, one of the ways I would do that. Go ahead. Sorry, sir. It's like an auction. I thought I. Yeah. Um, one of the ways we can do that is to help set the conditions from the commissioner's side with the laws and leg uh, legislation that would encourage the individuals and businesses to, to support that. Pensacola Beach has a noise ordinance. I would submit to you, if we're looking at a low impact ecological environment within between a base area that has no tourism, things like that, as well as a national park, perhaps that area, there are things that we can do. Bob Boston's not here to tell you what to do exactly. What I would suggest to you is we collectively take a look at this through the various means and board members uh, and boards that you've got and then try to focus this discussion. Specific to the kayaking and reef areas though, this ordinance, 9419, uh, is currently on the books. I don't believe it's being enforced, but what we want to try to do I think is align our ordinances and things to support this and encourage the participation. I know when I brought this up to uh, Mr. Broxton who owns the uh, Broxton Outdoors and just started a paddle board and kayak business um, or expanded his business to include those two and I showed him this he was uh, taken aback uh, because this would be this is a directly impact to what he's trying to promote there uh, in Navarre. So, excuse me, Bob. When you say it was taken about what the 300 feet of the, of the of Gulf Front Fishing Pier, that's one part of it. The yeah. other part of it is the public bathing area, and so in the ordinance, uh, so yeah, so it's 300 feet of the pier. But if you look at the public bathing areas, uh, that I've, I've gotten different pieces, and I know I've, Roger. You, yeah, I, I can clarify that when you get yeah. get ready. Yeah. And so the public right. bathing area, yes. sir, is the public beach. Mm -hmm. It's the, not the private beach down to Mean High Tide Line. Right. And just, just for clarification, Ordinance 94 that he referenced was the public swing area. It also includes fishing, hook, barb, and spear. Mm -hmm. And essentially, it's the guarded portion of Navarre yep. Beach. It's 300 feet east of the pier to approximately the edge of the old pavilion parking, and parking my, lot right there. If, then it, there's a gap between it and the yeah. P1 and P2 units, and we're just on either side and there's a gap between it. Sure. And what they propose is well, to, he, he further noted earlier in his request, is to have a wash down area in, in an area here. So we, we can adjust the limits of the public bathing area, but do understand kayakers do park here, move beyond the the guarded area and launch there. My, well memory, my memory is uh, that we dealt with something very similar to this last year or maybe the year before that about uh, surfboards and swimmers and we arrived at the decision that, that they can coexist and they enhance the public safety because it's a flotation device. So I think we're, we're plowing some ground here that we've already dealt with. But 
Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to be sure. And you, uh, I might not be able to throw a, a hook 300 feet anymore off that pier, but there was a day I could. And uh, <laughs> there's some, there's some, I wouldn't want to be within 400 feet of that pier. I'll just leave it at that. So, because you wind up with a hook in your back. Absolutely. And so one of the other things that we have been working on, and I say we because there's a number of folks and organizations, uh, members of the TDC, the Navarre Marine Science Center, Navarre Marine Sanctuary, what we are currently looking at is uh, developing the language for an ordinance that would come in to uh, re, re, uh, you know, fix this issue, but also within the Florida waterways that is the county's authority to designate the non-motorized area. And so what we're looking at is creating the non-motorized area because there's no such thing as a swimming area in the statutes of Florida. It's a non-motorized area. It's create the swimming area that would come out and around this to the pier and put reef markers on the south side of this element incorporating the requirements for the camera within the center reef uh, marker that we're looking at. But if I think if we take those two prong approach, just the solution of this problem, and then we have the public areas identified, we have the correct you know, cohabitation, if you will, and we're also providing uh, a safety environment for our swimmers. Uh, and I can go into any detail, but I know you're, I know you're pressed for time. Are there any questions? Slide, two slides, or three actually. Just... Thank you very much, Bob. We appreciate what you're doing. We'll be happy to work with you on it. Uh, and I know Kate is uh, a critical team member here in the TDC uh, because that's how we market this overall approach. And uh, your yeah, efforts are deeply appreciated. Does anybody else have anything to add? Uh, what we'll do is if, 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 Bob, if you and I can kind of draft uh, maybe a letter for the, ch for the board to approve Thursday and the uh, chair to sign, I think that would be a good start. And then we can start looking at the revisiting that ordinance that was done in 94 and kind of see how to, to integrate. Because the, the, the beach has significantly changed. Uh, in, in in 20 years, so obviously we need it's, it's time to go back and and, and review that. Mr. Mr. Melvin Bright, we we dealt with a similar issue. It's been about a year and a half, two years ago, so we, we can work through those. Commissioner Lynch. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Bob. I, I appreciate all the work that you've done and all the work that Mike and, and everybody else associated with the uh, the projects down there have done. There are so many moving parts to everything that's going on. Uh, down on Navarre Beach with the offshore, near shore, uh, the, the Marine Science Center. Uh, and you've done a great job of, of condensing this, in, this information. I think it also shows that we, we need some kind of liaison between the board and, and the, the center down there and the, and the, the reef committee. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see regular updates. I think that that's helpful for everybody in the board because most of us aren't as involved in that particular area as uh, the people who are down there on the ground. And uh, Bob's kind of been working without a net here. You don't have any official county designation. Um, you've been doing this uh, just. <laughs> uh, you've been you've been working on this project for a long time now. So I would like to. to work with Hunter and, and Sheila and, and come up with some way for for us to designate Bob as a liaison for the county with the reef with the reefing projects down there and Hunter and I have discussed this it, it, we can't necessarily give you any authority to do anything for the county mm -hmm. but I think it might give you some uh, legitimacy when you're going to these meetings because you're doing it anyway and you're doing a good job and you're, and you're giving us good information so I'd, I'd like to, to see if we could do something like that and you know in a reasonable spot to do that maybe would be to carve that position out within Kate's organization and TDC because that's where the money is that's where the 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 reason I say that is that's where the interface is with our advertising agency and uh, they would be getting the data firsthand from you instead of secondhand or third hand I think that would be a great spot you know, just administratively to, to plug you in to, to ensure the interface between our marketing arm 
in this effort. Yes, or sir. The, the Marine Advisory Committee. Or the Marine the, Advisory Committee, you know, either so, one, but, but just yeah. make, you know, buckle him up into the yeah. team. So we'll, let us discuss that, and I'll work with Hunter and, and yeah. the rest of the board. We'll, uh, we'll figure out a way forward on that and maybe get with the Marine Advisory Committee and see, uh, and, the, and the Restore Committee as well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very really much. Really appreciate time. what you're doing. Thanks a million. Everybody in Santa Rosa County appreciates it. it. There's a great uh, group of people behind, I'll tell you that, or that have been yeah. doing this. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Item number three is discussion of the renewal of leases for office space in Santa Rosa County, in Santa Rosa Kids House for the Office of State's Attorney and Guardian ad litem at current rates. Uh, backup is in the book. I move approval without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number four is discussion of the. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and take our break here because this has the potential to have some legs. So let's go ahead and let's be back. Uh, let's be back in place at uh, 1030. That
Please make your way to your seats. All right. Uh, item number four, discussion of acquisition of conservation easements on the following two parcels adjacent to NAS Whiting Field and an ongoing base buffering program funded by the Florida Defense Initiative Grant and the U.S. Navy REPI funds. Uh, Beverly Craig, is that Fontenot? Fontenot? Fontenot, I believe. Okay. 24-acre parcel appraised at $92,000. Uh, James Frank and Marguerite Page Skinner, 12.29 acre parcel with a appraised value of $50,000. Mr. Walker, uh, do you want to brief me any, anything more on that? You have my memo. This is part okay. of our continuing effort to buffer Whiting Field. The prices being offered are the appraised values for those easements. Commissioner Lynchard. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Cole, that made his way back to his seat, but we have a quorum, so I move approval without objection. Here and none, it passes. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I spoke with Mr. Gomey, and we have a couple of residents here who um, are here for, let's see, which item is that, Mr. Gomey? And it's number item four number four. Under public services. Could we move that up and go ahead and get that? Absolutely, we'll take that one. We'll take that one next. Okay, we're breaking here on the administrative committee. Uh, we'll come back to item number five on admin, and we're moving to public service. Uh, uh, item number four, Commissioner Lynchard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number four is discussion of a floodplain variance request of V zone construction standards for a lot located at 7513 North Shores Drive. In Navarre, Mr. Comey, you want to brief us up on this? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the um, from time to time we do uh, hear uh, variances of this nature, uh, and I'll just make a, a distinction here. This is not a variance from the elevation requirement. This is a variance uh, for the construction method uh, within 200 feet of the, the of the coastal in certain areas within 200 feet of what is called the V zone construction requirements require that a house be built on pilings. Their home is going to be is going to meet the flood elevation requirement. They're asking to vary from the uh, piling construction. It is a again the natural grade is is above the uh, FEMA floodplain requirement. Our freeboard uh, pushes uh, it below uh, the, the the freeboard requirement. However, they are going to meet uh, even the freeboard requirement with a, with a little additional fill. So what they're asking to vary is the construction method. I believe a good bit of their project is out of the V zone anyway, is out of that 200 feet, but a portion of the project is within that 200 feet. So they're, they're asking to vary that requirement. Well, staff does not see any issue with uh, approving this variance. And. Uh Commissioner Lynch, with your indulgence, I spoke with them uh, offline during, uh, during, uh, before we uh, brought the meeting to order, and they're talking about building a, a concrete construction. So uh, is that correct, sir? Yeah. So they're going to build, a, they're, they're out of floodplain, and they're going to build uh, that ICF construction. So uh, personally, unless someone has uh, any further comments, I'll move this for approval without objection. Here, not passes. Thank you for uh, for attending. Absolutely, and that and what we've just done. I'm sorry, we uh, we moved this to uh, Thursday, which which we will finalize it Thursday. No, sir, you no need to to return unless you just want to. You're welcome to come, but there's no you your attendance. Yes, sir, you will. Yes. Thank you for coming. All right, uh, back to the administrative committee, item number five, discussion of the amendment number five to the agreement with the U.S. Navy for encroachment in the vicinity of NAS Whiting Field. Uh, Mr. Walker and uh, Mr. Ray. Mr. Roy may want to address this one. This is just a, sub, uh, a fifth amendment to an agreement we've had in place with the Navy since 2007, again, in an effort to buffer not just whiting, but its outlying fields and any military installations in the county. Good morning, Randy Roy from Whiting Field. Um, 
as Ms. Jones alluded to, it's um, an amendment number five. Um, it's really because of our available repeat funds that we have is to maximize that uh, by adding the state to the county agreement, both of the overarching maps uh, that we use in both agreements, the area of concern maps, they actually are the same, they echo. Uh, the county actually has an additional map when we, re, uh, we extended the last agreement in 12 for another five years and actually added another map which addressed the outlying fields as well. In the state agreement, the only thing that's added is a different map is they have an actual escribano point was actually in their maps when we did their maps in 11. But as you, as you all well know, uh, due, to, due to MOEX, uh, they were able to secure that piece of property and protect it from the Joint Strike Fighter and the T-6 mission at Joint Strike Fighter Field, future Joint Strike Fighter Field at Choctaw. Um, by adding this uh, amendment, basically this gives us, internally Navy, with the repi funds we have to maximize our ex expiring escrows. Um, what we have, how we can, if the state moves on, a, the state's actually looking at a property uh, to the west side of the field. It's a pretty large section of property, also a lot of conservation and base buffering. It's, but if they would actually execute that prior to a county agreement, we would be able to move the escrows so we can maximize our, our escrows. Any further questions from the board? Lane has a question. Did, just, just an observation. Yes, sir. Judging by the way that my house shook last week when they <laughs> tested that bomb over in Eglin, the more buffering, the better. Y yes, sir. Actually, we had a few phone calls, and I, I told the young lady that was calling actually from Holly that uh, our aircraft, the helicopters, and wind up T6s with rubber bands. But they're, uh, they're highly subsonic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, actually, they actually a, uh, I think they put a notice yeah, on the that was public a sonic television. Boom. Yeah, that was yes. that was the F-16 out. Not to give Eglin a public um, announcement here, but I, um, most of their complaints when it comes to noise and those kind of things are done through the PA, public affairs office. Uh, you guys call them public information officers here, but uh, their main number and their main contact is a guy named Mike Spates. Uh, that would be a guy, if you received any damage, it was advertised on TV, but uh, Whitingfield's not going to be uh, throwing bombs off the ends of helicopters or T-6s. So, but I appreciate the time. We appreciate you, Randy. Yes, Thank you much. Yes, All right, uh, we'll move uh, item number five uh, to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, passes. Item number six is discussion of the assumption of the former Sandy Bottoms lease for building on, yeah, that's poorly constructed. Uh, discussion of assumption of the former Sandy Bottom Lease building on uh, Navarre Beach by Deep South Investments, LLC. Uh, Mr. Walker or Ms. Jones, whichever one wants to brief it. I hope all of you have the email from me in your material. Steve Herring and Larry Kingry, who make up the company Deep South Investments, LLC, inform me that they have been working with Sigma Tax Group or any, have either purchased or in the process of purchasing any interest that Sigma acquired through the tax deed process from Sigma. And now Deep South Investments would like to assume um, the old Sandy Bottoms lease. It has about five years left in it. It is a lease that requires a convenience store. Um, they want to assume the payments, the same amounts of money, that kind of thing. They do want to add to the offerings, if you will, um, some sort of uh, uh, real estate leasing office, which would be exempt from the 5% um, remittance to the county. Anybody have a question? I recommend we move this to Thursday without objection. Are you coming to object or speak or do you? We get to object, you get to speak. <laughs> Wallace Mahout, 5500 Cox Road, Milton, Florida. I was wondering why does this not have to go out for an RFP? Because it is an assumption of the existing. Um, if we want to look at doing something new or different, it would certainly need to, but this is um, same terms and conditions being assumed. Um, what is the difference between this and the peer lease? because the peer had to go out for RFPs. Yeah, there was no assumption being contemplated at all in that case. That one was over and we were looking for... Okay, yeah. There's Thanks. time left in the life of this lease and they're acquiring the tail end of the lease. I don't know how many years it is. It's four or five years left in the lease and they're just acquiring the last portion of the lease and then they'll have to come back. Okay. Um, Will, it, will a copy of this lease be available for the public? And will they be required to, to pay property taxes? 
the Sandy Bottoms lease said that the tenant would pay property taxes. They are assuming that same lease. So the answer is, if there's a tax bill, if it's assessed, which I expect that it is and it will be, then yes is the answer to the question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I recommend we move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number seven is discussion of amendment number three to the Florida Department of Environmental Protection Coastal Management Program Grant extended Baghdad Mill Site project through December 30th, 2014. Details are in the backup. I recommend we move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number eight is discussion of allocation of $25,000 from District 3 Recreation Funds for maintenance of the Town of Jay Recreation Park. I recommend we move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number nine is discussion of the uh, triathlon event on Navarre Beach, Saturday, September the 13th, 2014, with uh, partial proceeds going to Home for Heroes. I recommend we move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number 10 is discussion of the annual state aid to libraries grant agreement with the Florida Division of Libraries and Information System and authorize execution of the rele relevant documents. I recommend we move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number 12 is discussion of two amendments to the human resources policies recommended by the human resource director. Those changes are in your book. Uh, any discussion from the board? I recommend we move these to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number 12 has been pulled. Item number 13 is discussion of submission of the Florida Office of Greenways and Trails Certificate of Eligibility for grant to obtain easement for trails for trail connecting NAS Whiting Field Military Heritage Trail on NAS Whiting Field to uh, Blackwater State Forest requires action today. Uh, any further discussion or comments from the board? I recommend approval without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number 14 is discussion of rescheduling the MSBU rate hearing due to a conflict with the August 26th primary election. I recommend we move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number 15 is a public hearing scheduled for 9-30 Thursday, April 24th, 2014. Those are none. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, Commissioner Lister. The uh, variance for the sidewalks that we discussed earlier is a public hearing. That should have been listed. Is that correct? Mm, you know, won't that yeah, come back to us? I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't list it twice. I mean, we, okay. we, we, we put it up front so that we, we, th we felt like there would be some of the people here. But, yes, it will be in your normal uh, public hearing places, I believe, um, 930. 930. Okay. Thursday. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah, I, I just Thank you. put it both places. Thank you for that, Commissioner Richard. Item number 16, uh, Mr. Walker. These are, these are uh, uh, I guess, two grants from the uh, recommended by the Tourist Development uh, Council. The first is in the amount of $10,000 for the proposed Navarre Fishing Rodeo, uh, I believe sponsored by the uh, Navarre Beach Chamber Foundation, and that was approved, uh, as I said, in the amount of $10,000 and also an allocation of $5,000 uh, to the city of Milton for a portable stage. Uh, and both of these come as a recommendation from the uh, Tourist Development Council. Do we need to move this? Recommend we move this to Thursday without objection? That'd be correct. No, okay, sir. Hearing none, it passes. Item number 16 is engineer's report, Mr. Blaylock. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number one is a discussion of the work order from Hatchmont McDonald in the amount of $41,480 for the Peter Prince East Apron Rehab and Expansion. This is a grant uh, that we have had in the work program with uh, DOT, and the funding is going to be 80% DOT, 20% county. Okay. I, uh, details are in the backup. I recommend we move this to Thursday without objection. Here not passes. Item number two is the discussion of the Peter Prince Tea Hanger project. We received bids uh, last Tuesday. We have a placeholder. You see the bid time. We anticipate getting a final recommendation from our consultant later this week, which will circulate to the board in form of email with a specific recommendation for award. Okay, I recommend we move this to Thursday without objection. 
Hearing none, it passes. Item number three is a discussion of the change order number one to the contract with Panhandle Grading and Paving in the amount of $25,173.40 for the Navarre Beach Causeway Turn Lane Project. And when we bid the project, we, uh, we noticed that we were going out simultaneously with the bids and the permit through FDOT. FDOT required these changes, and this is noting the changes that were required as a condition of their issuance of the permit, and we'd recommend approval. Okay, I was I had a question there is why yes. so you've nailed you nailed the why that I recommend we move this to Thursday without objection Here or not it passes Item number four is the discussion of the contract with Volker Inc for the engineering uh, Services in the amount of sixty two thousand eight hundred eleven dollars for the site certification process for the Jeff H Road site and that's included in attachment D uh, Shannon Ogletree with the EDO office and engineering uh, negotiated with Volkert, and we are recommending this to the board. Okay. Uh, anybody have anything to add to this? Questions, comments? I recommend approval. I uh, recommend we move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item number five, uh, which is very pertinent, is a discussion of the work order for Basketball Donovan in the amount of $399,820 for the highly by the sea drainage study. In your backup was a specific scope of service and we are recommending at this time sections one, two, three, and the geotechnical environmental services okay. for section four. I do have one comment here. Yes, sir. In the future, please, when you do things like this, please note as low bidder selected at and approved by the board because this went out for bids. No, sir. Uh, uh, I think it did too. Uh, you. Uh, okay, we selected basketball, Donovan. I stand corrected. Yes, but we have we have approved this at a prior yes we, meeting. Yes, we will do that as a recommended. And if you were just reading this on the internet or, or watching it at home, you would have no indication this has been discussed before right we, now. We'll note that for Thursday's action. Okay, that was my only objection, that, okay. that, that you wouldn't realize that this field had already been plowed. Right, yes. okay. We will do that. All right, uh, I recommend we move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Commissioner. This is where I, I had asked to have the information item put on the agenda. I thought it would just be good information for us all to have regarding the uh, the rainfall that we've received, not just over the last couple of weeks, but really over the last six months, nine months, maybe 12 months. You know, our flooding problems in the south end of the county, but now we're, we're seeing some more in the north end of the county as well, um, have been well documented through emails and phone calls. But if you look, I just wanted to point out the uh, inordinate amount of rain that we've had. This shows the 60-day observed precipitation in Florida. And you can see that big band of red that stretches across the panhandle, and, and we're right in the middle of it, especially the south end of the county. And if you'll go to the next slide, this shows you the last 90 days from, from April 19th, the previous 90 days. Go back one there, Roger. Shows you the departure from normal, and this is percent of normal precipitation. So gray is 100%. We are in the light blue. That's but we've in the last 90 days, we've received between 150 and 200% of the normal rainfall for that period. Now go. This is 60 days. We've received between 200 and 300% of the normal rainfall for that 60-day period. 30 days, well, you, we're, we're, now we're still 200 to 300, but you see a little bit of uh, purple there in the center part of the county. So that's between 300 and 400% of the 30-day normal precipitation. And then you go to the last 14 days, you'll see we received between 400 and 600% of the normal rainfall for that 14-day period. And that's on top of the rain that we've received for the last 90, 180 days. Um, and then finally, to kind of bring it home, we, didn't have, we don't have this data for Santa Rosa County. This is Tallahassee. And if you look back at that precipitation chart, you can see that this band stretches across the panhandle. 
But if you look down to the highlighted area, season to date, that's hard to read up there, but that's from March 1st to April the 20th, uh, we've received, and I would say we, this is Tallahassee, but it's probably not too far off, 18.9 inches of rain. That is the third wettest period in the last 65 years for this particular area. And down there, the last six months, this is the seventh wettest six-month period in the last 65 years. So when we say we've received a lot of rain and that's what's uh, making the problem worse, it's true. <laughs> there's, there's empirical data. This is not just us saying it's rained a lot. It has rained an inordinate amount, and we are in yeah. the, in the uh, hopefully the tail end of a monsoon. I hope but, so. You know, all of our flooding problems have, have just, they've built up and built up, and the problem's compounded because the water, the ground is so saturated that a heavy dew will cause a pond in some areas now. Yeah. So we, we need some dry weather, and uh, we, need it, we need it for a while. Yeah. I uh, had the pleasure of driving home from Gainesville Friday afternoon, and uh, that was quite a trip. I can tell you, when I got home, my wife told me that we had accumulated seven point two inches of rain Friday. It was it's 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 coming down all at one time. You know, last Monday we received five inches, a solid five inches in some places, more than that. And then and then on top of that, you know, Thursday night into Friday. I drove around South Santa Rosa County Friday morning and just areas roadways were, were flooded or overtopped with water. A couple of roads were, were impassable. Uh, again, notably the entrance to Holly by the Sea, still uh, imp impassable. Um, yeah, I went by there last night and saw the cones, and I was in my car, so I didn't take yeah. that road last night. But uh, yeah. you know, there there are areas that I see see Jim Wade right. with basketball Donovan back there. There are areas where they're going to uh, hopefully be able to provide us some relief with the uh, stormwater master plan that they're going to work on. But a lot of the flooding that we're seeing right. is nuisance flooding caused by right. these heavy, heavy Heavy rains. rain. And, and there's one thing, and I'm going to preach this until the day my throat dries up and I can't say it anymore. Those two ponds at the head of Holly by the Sea that I thought were holding ponds are not holding ponds. Holly by the Sea Board of Directors sells that capacity to Navarre Water and Sewer, and Navarre Water and Sewer pump affluent into those ponds, treated affluent, gray water which Holly by the Sea uses to spray the south side. And invariably there's, where you have human beings, you have mistakes made, and you don't get the affluent flow shut off from, Holly, from, from Navarre, and uh, the sprinklers don't run during the rain. And so the normal system is that the sprinklers disperse what Holly Navarre sends them every day. Theoretically, that's what happens. The sprinklers spray what Holly Navarre sends them, so that maintains a level. And then when it starts raining and somebody forgets or Holly fails to shut the effluent off and the sprinklers stop, then we overtop 98 and the five of us get credit for it. And, and that's the one thing that we can say is not ours for sure. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Lane, I appreciate you doing this. Would have liked to have had it Friday when my wife called me and told me to come home because when I got there, we had about an inch of water in our living room, and I had to run the sump pump and get out the wet vac, which, uh, and, and it's all cause of the hard pan. I mean, we're in a pretty high place where I live, but the hard pan is saturated and can't go anywhere else, so uh, I've learned to deal with it. And, but. Um, she didn't appreciate it any though, <laughs> but, but maybe this will help sway, you know, satisfy her a little. We did get some spring cleaning done though. So, Commissioner. yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Lynchard. Uh, item number six is recommend approval of construction plans. Uh, I'm sorry, Roger, that's yours. You <laughs> finish up. Yes, and item six is construction plans, Borcade Cove. You've seen this a number of times. They're still working through trying to get their development order. And then item number seven is... Well, the, let's, okay. let's uh, move this to Thursday without objection. Here, none, it passes. And then item number seven is the approval for the final plat for New Haven Estates. This is a 23-lot subdivision that has been 
uh, approved and developed in uh, working District 5, and it and is located just off of uh, East Bay Boulevard, as shown on the my computer here. Okay. And so if they get all their items uh, completed and into us and before time, we'll uh, have them on the agenda. Will that include a hydrology report so that we know whether or not this soil is well drained? And I'm serious, that's not a I'm, frivolous I'm, question. No, I understand this one is already developed, it's on the ground. We can bring you the construction plans that do include a geotechnical report, but this is a final plat. The, the improvements are. But we do know what the hydrology of this soil we, is we now. Know, we know it met our requirements of the 100 year design storm. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Recommend we move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. That concludes the engineer's report. Okay, Public Service Committee, Commissioner Lynchard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number one is discussion of award for bid for the ship emergency repair project to the lowest bidder, Kaiser Siding and Construction, Inc. The bid amount of $9,850 exceeds the maximum emergency repair limit of 10000 that's because the total project cost and lien would be $10,611.95. Any questions, discussion on this? I'll move this, move approval of that to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item two, discussion of approval of the ship second mortgage subordination request for the property located at 4373 Pine Villa Circle in Pace. I'll move this to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item three, discussion of approval of the ship second mortgage subordination request for the property located at 6495 Skyline Drive in Milton. I'll move that to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item four has been discussed and moved already. Item five, discussion of award for printing the 2014 disaster guides to Panaprint in the amount of $16,697 for 30,000 copies as the lowest quote through comparison shopping. And I'll move that to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. And that concludes public services. Public Works Committee, Commissioner Call. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item number one is discussion of resurfacing the following roads in Working District 5 and an estimated cost of $134,797. Frontera Street from Nevada Street to Escola Street, Pampolonia Street, Eastern End, El Fernando Way, El Sereno Way, Village Parkway from Champaign Avenue to Highway 98, Cypress Lane, and Pro-Am Court. I move that to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item two is discussion of posting no through truck signage on Chantilly Way and Ridge Avenue in District 1. This was brought to my attention by s several uh, folks that live in that area that have seen increased through truck traffic, and I'd like to uh, discuss this with Mr. Whitfield and would like to move that to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item three is discussion of one-year extension of agreement with Southern Energy Company for fuel, oil, and lubricants at the same price, with, price which is equal to Santa Rosa County School Board pricing. And move that to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Item four is discussion of comparison shopping proposals from Smith Tractor Company and Beard Equipment Company in the amount of 13000 $532.75 each for two 10-foot wing flex, flex wing rotary mowers. Move out without objection to Thursday. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. On that one, I do need to bring out that we received proposals from uh, both uh, Smith Tractor and Beard Equipment, and we got back the exact, exact price from both, and that's primarily because they both work through a, a competitively bid program called the NPP, the National Purchasing Program. And so because they're both John Deere dealers, they have the same program. Since we need to buy two of these rotary mowers, it would be my recommendation just to simply buy one from each vendor. Okay, and they're both John Deere. Any discussion from other board members? If yes. not, with that caveat, we'll, uh, we'll change that and move that to Thursday without objection. Okay, and so we're moving without objection to the discussion of comparison pop, uh, shopping proposals for Smith Tractor Company and Beard in the amount of $13,532.75 each. Uh, so we're going to buy a total of two, one from Smith Tractor and one from Beard Equipment. 
Yes, sir. That's, that okay. would be my recommendation. Okay. And we'll move that to Thursday without objection. Hearing none, it passes. Um, number five is discussion of approximately 2,600 feet of storm drain replacement on Pine Blossom Road. Any comments from Mr. Whitfield? This is a major storm drain for the, for the Pine Blossom, Happy Hollow area. Uh, it, it was put in back in the mid-90s, or actually an open ditch was put in before that, but it was improved on by, by the placement of storm drain pipe in the, in the mid-90s, and it provides drainage for that area. Keeps a number of homes from, from flooding. And we've had to make some repairs on that system over the past few years. That system has, has begun to fail. And uh, we had a pretty catastrophic failure uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, where it's just a major cave in. Uh, we feel like the, the storm drain has reached a point where we really just need to look at replacing it. There's, it's going to take a it's going to be a, a very large project. It's, uh, I mean, we're talking about a, a storm drain that's about a half mile long. It's, you know, 15 plus feet deep in the ground. You're dealing with water table issues. You're dealing with needing to drive sheet piling to protect your workers in the trench. It's, it's going to be an extremely large and expensive project. And uh, you can see in my memo, I've listed a couple of different options. One would be, uh, uh, authorize engineering to go forward developing plans and specs, bid documents, and, and bid the project out. Uh, of course, the other would be uh, public works to do the project in-house. If we do it in-house, I don't have the equipment to do it. I would have to rent sheet piling. I would have to rent a, a well point system that can handle the groundwater. Uh, I've calculated that uh, I would have, just in rental costs for the project, uh, I would have around uh, $175,000 just in rental equipment if I, if I do it. Um, and, and not to mention that, you know, it's going to take several months to accomplish the project, which uh, obviously we've got numerous drainage problems throughout the county. If I have to commit resources to a project of this magnitude, then that's going to delay other projects. So it would be my recommendation to authorize engineering to go forward and, and bid this, prepare the bid documents to bid this project out and at least see what kind of bids we get back. At that time, the board could decide whether it's, uh, it would be more cost effective for public works to do the project. In the meantime, what I've got in place is a bypass pump, and, and it's, it's not even cheap. It's, I'm paying $10,000 a month rental on a 12-inch pump, and um, um, the, the uh, discharge uh, piping because I have to I, I have to pump from one inlet to another and it's they're a thousand feet apart so I've got to have a thousand feet feet of discharge piping and we're, we're pumping to keep those homes from getting wet and uh, I'm listing in my memo some interim measures of possibly going in and doing some other things but after getting pricing on that I, I feel like our best option is just to simply keep pumping until we can uh, uh, either get a contract in place or are the decisions made for us to do the work. So it uh, seems like the most cost-effective interim measure is just to simply continue to pump water, bypass the, the caved-in area in the pipe until we can get work, get a project started. Okay. Davis, thank you very much. Uh, and what we'd move today would be just to, or to move it to Thursday to, to uh, task staff with, with uh, or task engineering with uh, with working up the prices and the bids on this. So. Uh, to prepare, get some, some bid documents, plans and specs, so we can get some uh, biddable bid do you know, yeah, documents we, to go out for bid. Uh, Roger said that that would probably take four to five weeks for those to, to get a package ready. And then we're probably looking at a few weeks, you know, for the, for the yeah. bid to come back in. And then by the time you get a, a notice to proceed, we're, we're projecting probably about three months before we could have a contract in place. But we'll, we're going to keep our fingers crossed and hope for a lot more dry weather, and we'll pump as, as often as we need to. Okay. All right. So we'll move that as discussed to Thursday's agenda. All right. Without Hearing, objection. Hearing none, it passes. Next uh, will be financial, uh, budget financial management, Commissioner Cole. All right, thank you. Item number one is discussion of Budget Amendment 2014-114 in the amount of $3,500 to increase the budget for the FEMA HMPG Settlers Colony HMPG grant to include reimbursement 
of project management cost approved by the Board of County Commissioners at the April 10th, 2014 regular meeting. The grant will, will fund 75% of the project manager cost at $2,625 with a local match coming from the electric franchise drainage reserves. I move that to Thursday without objection. Here and not it passes. Item two is discussion of budget amendment 2014-115 in the amount of $125,000 to carry forward funds for the Northwest Florida Marine Edge Incorporated Gateway to the Gulf program as provided at the April 10th, 2014 BOCC regular meeting in the Tourist Development Fund. I move that without objection to Thursday. Here not it passes. Item three is discussion of budget amendment 2014-116 in the amount of $23,820 to fund the drainage work in the Sanders Santander subdivision by Three Trades Consulting Incorporated as approved at the April 10th, 2014 Board of County Commission regular meeting in the Road and Bridge Fund. I move that to Thursday without objection. Here not it passes. Item four is discussion of budget amendment 2014-117 in the amount of $40,780 to carry forward funds in the general fund for engineering services for site certification process for the Northwest Florida Industrial Site at I-10 as approved at the April 10, 2014 Board of County Commission regular meeting. I move that to Thursday without objection. Here and not, it passes. Item five is budget amendment 2014-118 in the amount of $75,179 to recognize the Dory Slossenberg Driver Education Safety Act revenue fiscal year 2013 of $32,108 and $43,071 fiscal year 2014 earned to date and distributes the fund toward driver's education programs in Santa Rosa County in the general fund. I move that to Thursday without objection. Here and not, it passes. And a final item is discussion of county expenditure and check register, and I'll move that to Thursday without objection. Here and not, it passes. That concludes budget finance. Ms. Jones, your report. Thank you, Commissioner. First of all, I feel like I need to apologize to you all for giving you the following information in this particular forum. But it was important to me that you all receive, that as many people, staff and whomever, receive the information at one time. Uh, next, I would like to thank you all very, very much for the opportunity to represent Santa Rosa County for the past four years. It has certainly been a privilege. Uh, however, my family and I have made the decision together that the time has come for me to restructure my legal practice, uh, to spend more time with my two elementary age sons whom I enjoy just very, very much. And so I would like it if you could move to Thursday the acceptance of my resignation with my thanks. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, we certainly respect your wishes, and we will move this to Thursday without uh, objection. I would appreciate you giving us that other warm fuzzy about how long you're going to work until we find your replacement. I think there's something in your contract. I just don't know what it is off the top of my head. I don't know that it's in my contract, but it is a warm fuzzy that I do need to give you. I will work with you all as long as you would like for me to, and we'll certainly make this as smooth a transition as is possible. Okay, well, at this point in time, I'd like to uh, instruct the county uh, administrator to get the RFP put together, and uh, let's uh, begin this process uh, immediately, and uh, we appreciate your hard work, and I hope we didn't beat you up too bad. I hope you still love us. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, wow. Okay. Public forum. Anything anybody wants to bring to the this? Good morning. Jerry Cooey, 6049, Arnie's Way. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you today. A um, couple, couple items here that... Uh, I just I just feel necessary that need to be said today. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna start over the over the issue of the logoed umbrella that uh, that was discussed about uh, that Mr. Cole had with him, and I understand, and I'm certainly accepting of the county attorney's uh, reading from the 
ethics department that uh, it needs to exceed $100 before we keep track of that. Um, however, I would like to read um, part of the state statute, which is 112.313. And it says solicitation or acceptance of gifts, no public officer, employee of an agency, local government, attorney, or candidate for nomination or election shall solicit or accept anything of value to the recipient, including a gift, loan, reward, promise of future employment, favor, or service based upon any understanding that the vote, official action, or judgment of the public officer, employee, local government attorney, or candidate would be influenced thereby. I'm not going to tell you that I think an umbrella influenced the decision on any vote, but that company, Lifeguard, did indeed uh, enter into a business agreement with Commissioner Cole, and there was $50,000 that exchanged hands, and shortly thereafter, of that $50,000 exchange, whether it was a loan or a business venture, I don't know. But there was a vote that came up before the Board of County Commissioners, and a Lifeguard had asked for 350,000 miles on their ambulances, and uh, Commissioner Cole wanted way more than that. And uh, uh, at that time, Commissioner Jim Williamson made it clear that they wasn't gonna go any anymore. But the point in this is, we shouldn't be taking gifts. The point in this is that a good moral man's graveside, we shouldn't be advertising the fact. And, and, and I will tell you personally, um, I took it very personal. I didn't like it at all. Um, another issue that I think we need to talk about today, and, and uh, a lot of people know that I believe in public records, I think public records are important. And I asked for some public records a couple weeks ago, which I have in my possession. And I, 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 I'm going to say this. Jim Williamson was a good and moral man. And prior to Jim Williamson's passing, he made a request that his son fulfill the remainder of his seat. And I'll tell you that, you know, even Commissioner Salter and I, we might not get along, but if I saw such a request from Commissioner Salter, I'd make sure that I honored that request. Uh, we've had several circumstances in Santa Rosa County where that has occurred, and I think it's the right thing to do. I say that, that in this public records request, I find a text message that went to Doug Broxson. And in that text message was the telephone number for Mark Cotton. And the significance of that is Mark Cotton has put his name in the hat to be appointed by the governor, and that's fine. It's America. He can do whatever he wants to. Um, I'm going to tell you that I'm personally disappointed in you, Mr. Cole, for whatever role you played in that. Um, I think it's offensive. I think it's undercutting. I think it is uh, certainly not in the spirit. And, you know, I love, a, I love a political fight as much as the next guy. We're having a good arm wrestling match over a courthouse and some other things. This is so far below that, it pales in comparison. And uh, you may not like the fact that I'm doing it from here, but I don't like the fact whatever participation you had, and I'm sure you'll have an explanation, uh, I expect it. Uh, Representative Doug Broxson will have an exp explanation, but it seems awful strange to me that on April the 1st, when Jim Williamson was still alive, this kind of stuff went on. And I want you to know, from a personal standpoint, I don't appreciate it. And all of the things that I heard said up here, that Jim Williamson was a good man, a moral man, and an ethical man, I think this is stomping all over his grave for anyone to participate in that. And for the record, I'll be having a conversation with Doug Broxson about it, too. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Cole. Thank you. Uh, speaking of morals, I find it kind of despicable, or despicable that somebody would be concerned with an umbrella when they're supposed to be mourning somebody's funeral. 
I didn't go out of my way to choose an umbrella. It was simply in the back of my wife's truck and we picked it up and used it that day that I attended the burial services. So that's all I care to say about that. I have all the respect in the world for Mr. Williamson and have in the past, and I have all the respect in the world for Jared and wish him good luck. But when a con constituent calls me and asks, how do you get in touch with the governor or the governor's office on inquiring or applying for the possibility of fulfilling a seat, I simply told him the best thing I could do is recommend you to the state representative. I don't have knowledge of how to do that. And there, there was a connection. Nothing to undercut, nothing to undermine. I know Mr. Cooey always goes out of his way to find negativity in anything this board does and always feels like somebody's out there for the payoff. But I can assure you, after a year and a half FBI conducted research into that piece of property and that exact contract that you questioned, if you think you can better do a better job than the FBI, then step up to the plate, because I don't think you can. Anything else, uh, anything else from the public? Yes, sir, name and address for the record, please. Uh, Mr. Anderson, you got to make the light come on. The other button. Okay. <laughs> I'm Clyde Anderson, live at 1097 Lionsgate. Uh, I'm president of the uh, Lionsgate Homeowner Association, but I'm not here to speak for the association because they, the board has not discussed this uh, survey that I did. I've furnished each of you uh, the study that I did about garbage. A friend of mine said, Anderson, why are you digging in garbage? And I said, well, to furnish information because of an observation I had. And uh, each of you have been furnished a copy of, of my study. Uh, Mr. Walker got a copy. Uh, Gerald um, Anderson, the environmental uh, guy for the county, got a copy. And I hope this information is useful to the county. I did it in Lionsgate. Lionsgate is, uh, we have 70 owners in Lionsgate. And I studied the, the garbage use for uh, four weeks, which is in my report. Uh, and the result of it is that the, the garbage uh, is used less than 50%. And so um, I think if uh, you gentlemen decided to go for one pickup a week uh, when the contracts are up in September, that it would not be a hardship on anybody to uh, go to it once a week. Uh, I had a, a conversation with Commissioner Lanchard, and he pointed out to me that but when the bidding was done before, that there was very little difference in the cost of twice a week and once a week. Uh, that uh, makes the cost not much of a consideration, but then also pointed out but before has been the use of the streets and the garbage trucks on the street. And if you cut it to once a week, it cut down that 50%. So um, uh, I appreciate this opportunity to speak to you. Appreciate the work you guys are doing. And if there's any other information that I can furnish to you from digging in the garbage, I'll be glad to do it. Thank you. Thank Mr. You, Anderson, Mr. Thank, you for, uh, thank you for coming up. And, and I appreciate you putting that little survey together. It is good information. It does go to show that most people can get by fairly easily with, uh, with once a week garbage pickup. I'm not sure we're ready to go there yet, but uh, uh, it definitely gives us some, some food for thought as we move forward. Well, and, and I'll just weigh in on that too. Uh, once a week does Audrey and I just fine until the grandkids are in town and then uh, twice, three times a week may be required. So I guess it depends on the age of your family and the size of your family and stuff, but I appreciate you. it. Anything else from anybody? Yes, sir. Fred Thompson, 6854 Pine Blossom Road. And I'm glad to hear that you're going to do something. All I just want to say is don't drag your feet too long because 
Yes, sir. We, we understand uh, what you're going through, Mr. Thompson. I'm aware of that area, and you've heard uh, Mr. Whitfield's remarks. So uh, the county is just absolutely swamped, and that's no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> we're just inundated with, with flooding problems. I, I worked construction for 40 years, and I understand what the rain does, but I'll... I also understand that sometimes there's delays that's unnecessary. Well, yes, sir. Well, uh, so we're we're getting a hurry I up. I want it on the front burner. Right. We, Thank you. We have a hurry up in our get along. Okay. Anything else from anybody else? We are adjourned. <laughs>